The topic of this video is solving nonlinear systems of equations by substitution or elimination. Let's look at a problem. All right, here's our system. The top equation is 7x squared minus xy plus y squared equals 7. The bottom equation is 4x plus y equals 4. The top equation is nonlinear. The bottom equation is linear. But if even just one equation is not linear, that makes the entire system nonlinear. So this is a nonlinear equation. Okay, the first decision we have to make is what method should we use, substitution or elimination? And the way we make that decision is as follows. Step one, clear both equations of fractions. Good news, we don't have any. Step two, look at the coefficients of the x or y terms. And remember, when we say x or y, we really mean x or y. Not x squared, not y cubed, not xy, just an x, just a y. Well, we've only got two of those, here and here. This one has a coefficient of 4. This one has a coefficient of 1. And for that reason, we have a y term with a coefficient of positive 1. We will use substitution for this problem. All right, so let's label our equations. This is equation 1. This is equation 2. To use substitution, we now solve equation 2 for this particular variable, the one that had a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. So to do that, we just have to recognize that we can move this term to the other side. And when a term changes sides, it changes signs. So we get y equals negative 4x plus 4. This is still equation 2. We just made it look different. Now we can substitute that into equation 1. Everywhere we see a y in equation 1, we're going to put negative 4x plus 4 instead. So that means we're actually going to substitute twice, once here and once here. And whenever you replace something with something new in algebra, remember that if it has an exponent, or if it has a multiplying neighbor, or if it is being subtracted, then you must put the new thing in parentheses. So we get 7x squared minus x, parenthesis, negative 4x plus 4, close parenthesis, plus, parenthesis, negative 4x plus 4, close parenthesis, squared, equals 7. All right, so now we've got a few things that we need to figure out. We need to figure out how do we resolve both of these parentheses. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's write these things out. So we've got 7x squared minus x times the negative 4x plus 4 plus an exponent tells me how many times to multiply a base by itself. So this means I'm going to have a negative 4x plus 4 times another negative 4x plus 4, and I will use the FOIL multiplication method to get rid of the parentheses. Here, I will use the distributive property to get rid of the parentheses. All right, so let me clear some space. These problems are longer and require quite a bit of space. All right, here we go, 7x squared. We're going to go ahead and distribute here. A negative times a negative is a positive, and 4x times x is 4x squared. A negative times a positive is a negative, and x times 4 is 4x. And then here comes the FOIL. Here we go. So negative 4x times negative 4x is positive 16x squared. Uh, negative 4x times 4 makes minus 16x. 4 times negative 4x makes minus 16x and 4 times 4 is 16. Then we still have equals 7. Okay, so we've got some like terms to combine. Let's see if we can identify what those are. 7x squared, 4x squared, 16x squared. All of those are going to be combined. Let's add the coefficients. 7 and 4 is 11, plus 16 is 27. So we have 27x squared. Then our terms that just have x. So minus 4, minus 16, minus another 16, that results in minus 36x. And then the rest, plus 16 equals 7. This is a quadratic equation in one variable, and there are multiple ways to solve a quadratic equation in one variable, but the easiest is probably factoring, so let's see if we can get equal 0. Let's subtract 7 on both sides, so minus 7, minus 7, and we're going to have... 27x squared minus 36x plus 9 equals 0. 
Now, if we're going to try and solve this by factoring, we have to know our factoring steps. The very first step of factoring is to put all of your terms in descending order, which this is already in. The second step of factoring is to identify and factor out your greatest common factor, your GCF, which for this equation happens to be 9. 9 goes into 27 three times, 9 goes into 36 four times, and of course 9 goes into itself just once. So if we factor out the 9 here, we're going to have 3x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0. Now we just have to see if we can factor this trinomial. I'll clear some space. In fact, we may have gotten to the part of the problem where I can split the board here. So let's try that. All right, so we've got 9 parenthesis 3x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0. Uh, this is one of those factoring times where I think maybe we can uh, use the educated guess and check method and get ourselves an answer that way. With the educated guess and check method, we have to look at the signs. The second sign is positive, which means these have to match. The first sign is negative, which means that they both have to be negative. The only way to make 3x would be, excuse me, the only way to make a 3x squared would be a 3x and an x. And the only way to, make, way to make 1 is a 1 and a 1. Now all we have to do is check it and see if this is the correct factor. So with FOIL, we check. 3x squared minus 3x minus another makes minus 4x plus 1. So this was a pretty easy factoring problem. Now we can use the zero product property. Set each factor equal to 0. So we get 9 equals 0, 3x minus 1 equals 0, x minus 1 equals 0. 9 equals 0 is false. That's a contradiction and therefore has no solution. This does not give us a value of x. Adding 1 to both sides, I get 3x equals 1, x equals 1 third. Adding 1 to both sides, I get x equals 1. All right, this looks like the end of the problem, but it's not. This is a system. Remember, a system, the answers look like ordered pairs. So what we know at this point is that there are at least two answers. They both have an x value uh, specified here. What we do not yet know is what are the y values that go with those x values. OK, so to find that, we need somewhere to plug into. We need to pick an equation somewhere in our solution, anywhere in our solution, that will help us identify what y equals. Now, even though I've already erased it from my marker board, uh, one of the very first things we wrote here was that y was equal to negative 4x plus 4. We got that by moving this term to the other side and changing its sign. So if you think about it, we know x. What we want to know is y. So this makes a really good equation for us to plug into. If x equals 1 third, what's y? Well, let's plug in and find out. y equals negative 4 times 1 third plus 4. That would be negative 4 thirds plus 4. This is a fraction. This is an integer. In order to combine them, I need to turn the integer into a fraction. So let's write 4 as 4 over 1. And let's get a common denominator, times 3 times 3. So now I have y is equal to negative 4 thirds plus 12 thirds, which equals 8 thirds. So this gives me my first ordered pair solution, 1 third comma 8 thirds. Now all I have to do is check the other value, which is what if x equals 1? OK, so let's go ahead and do that now. What if x equals 1? All right, we know that y equals negative 4x plus 4. So if x equals 1, what does y equal? Well, we get negative 4 times 1 plus 4, which is negative 4 plus 4, which is 0. So we'll get the ordered pair 1 comma 0. OK, so this is excellent. We now have two potential solutions. But we are not done with the problem. 
because we have to check them. It is a requirement to check nonlinear systems to verify that the points that we believe are the answers are really the answers and that they are not extraneous. And because the length of these problems is quite long, I'm going to break that up into two pieces. So we'll end this video here, and then in the next video, we will check both of these ordered pair solutions.